then even the option, the correct option have been, has been inserted. I called you, but you didn't answer. So it's, uh, the statement itself is correct, because the uh, correct option has been inserted in the question. So because you have a positive statement, when the, the, we have contradictory statements, so that is where you use but. So you cannot use two positives. That, okay, for instance, I called you, you could have said, and you didn't answer, because those statements are positives. But when you have one positive statement and one negative, then the conjunction should be but. So it is one of those coordinating conjunctions. I called you, but you didn't answer my calls. All the dash should come. Yes, of course, this is a um, question on compound nouns, pluralization of compound nouns. When you're having nouns that are more than one or two words, then you call it compound nouns. So now the problem comes to which one should be pluralized. So when you want to pluralize them, you pluralize the root word, which is the base word, rather than the afflictions. So all the dash should come. Heads of states, heads of states, head of states, head of states. So in, among the three words that are there, heads of state, which one should take the pluralization? So, and of which the root word should be the one to be pluralized. So that is why you should have it as all the heads of state, all the heads of state, option A. All the heads of state should come. So the head should be the one to take the pluralization, not the state. It can't spell dash. This is spelling, pronunciation. Pronunciation. Think option B and D are correct. They are spelled the same way. So there should be no O, letter O, J. P O R P R O N U N C I A T I O N. That is pronunciation. So both option B and D are correct there. This is also a question on correct spelling. He comes here every dash, fortnight. That is every two weeks. So the best way to have it written is fortnight, option A. F-O-R-T-N-I-G-H-T. Every fortnight, which means every week, every two weeks. I mean, dash mother is round. We are talking about possessives, compound possessives. That is two or more people are possessing the same entity. So who should take the possession? The rule says the last person should be the one to take the possession. We are having a single mother who gave birth to both Olu and Ade. So you say Olu and Ade's mother. Olu and Ade's mother is around. If you prioritize both, that is if you put possessives in both, then definitely they are going to own different mothers, just like option D. Ade's and Olu's mother will mean who gave birth to Olu is actually different from who gave birth to Ade. But in this case, we are talking about a singular mother. So Ade and Olu, Olu and Ade's mother is around. That is option A to be your answer. I saw him dash down the street. This is bare infinitive. I saw. When you have words like saw, had, allow, these words are, they are bare infinitives. So the next verb, the rule says, the next verb should be a plural present verb. I saw him go down the street. I saw him go down the street. So you cannot say going, nor went, nor gone. I saw him go down the street. Dash, I came late. Call the police. So we are talking about uh, the best words to be used. So you will not be tautological. Should, would, should in case, even. Of course, we do, of, we do hear of should in case, but that is tautological. Should and in case are performing the same functions. So you do really need not to uh, re-explain those functions. So should I come late? So the verb should be late. Should I come late? I mean come in the present tense. Should I come late? That is, in case I come late, call the place. So, it's either you say, should I come late, call the police, or in case I come late, call the police. You cannot use both 
together because it becomes uh, tautological. I don't want to dash this money. This is question on righteous of work. Lost, lose, lose, losing. So for you to get rid of something from you or that you can no longer find, you say, I don't want to. And it is still in futuristic tense. That is future present. I don't want to. So lose, that is option B. I don't want to lose this money. Lose, option C, is an adjective for something to not to be tight. Okay, that oh, he put on a loose baggy. But in this case, we are talking about to get rid of something that is loose and of which its past is lost. So I don't want to lose this money. Option B being an answer. Your sister and mother dashed around yesterday. Your sister and mother is, ah, was, where. Of course, the first thing you have to do here is the issue of time. So the present ones are out of the options. So because we have the time frame of yesterday. So we should have a past verb as your answer. So both is and ah will be out of it. So your sister and mother dashed around yesterday. So you are choosing between was and where. And of course, of the rules of Concord, there's what we call Siamese agreement. Yes, truly, when you use and in joining items, they become plurals. But in this case, the sister is also the mother. Yes, the sister here is also the mother because there should be a pointer. Had it been there were two different people, so it should have been your sister and your mother. So in as much as you don't have any other pointer after the and, and you just have your mother straight, so definitely this is a kind of uh, bicephalus. They have two, the, the, the kind of person talked about is singular entity, but taking two positions. So that is what happens as well when you say, okay, the governor and commissioner for education. The governor and commissioner for education. It means the governor doubles as the commissioner for education. But if you say the governor and the commissioner for education, article V, then it means there are two different people. So from there, you can actually have a plural verb. But in as much as you are not having any other pointer here, it means the same person is still being discussed. So your sister and mother was around yesterday. There's no circumstance. Should you call him? We're talking about preposition there. So which preposition should go with circumstance? On, under, in, with. So in as much as you're talking about circumstance, you say under no circumstance. Under no circumstance, should you call him? On no condition. On no condition. Had it been we have condition, or no condition, but under no circumstance. Under no guise. So these are relative prepositions and how they are going to, they should be used in a better form. He is dash. He uses both hands equally. So descriptive uh, sort of adjective. So one who uses both hands equally is what? Ambivalent, occultic, ambidextrous, androgynous. So one who uses both hands equally is ambidextrous. So is an ambidexter, having to use both the right and the left hands equally. You say it's ambidextrous. We have to dash resources together to achieve this. So what verb should be used for resources? Put, gather, pull, pull. But we are talking about resources. So, you know, this is uh, also a very common question. So, but to differentiate between, are you actually pulling, that is P-U-L-L, or P-O-O-L, to have the correct uh, kind of choice? You say pull. You pull resources together, P-O-O-L, option D. You are pulling resources together to achieve this. That is, you are kind, to, kind of putting all hands on deck to have it done. Don't take it dash. It is just a joke. This is also common. Don't take it dash. It is just a joke. Personally, personal, impersonal, with personality. The word there is personally. 
you are taking it too personally. Not you are taking it too personal. You are taking it personally. So it is just a joke. Don't take it too personally. The little argument ended in a dash. Free fight. Free for all. Free for all fight. Free all fight. We are talking about some sort of a fight whereby different people are involved. You know, uncontrollable kind of fight. We call it a free for all. You don't really have to put the word fight, which is option B. That is, it later ended in a free for all. If you put fight again, if you add the word fight again, a free for all is a type of fight. So definitely it becomes tautological. So it ended in a free for all. Because there are some of those kind of uh, items or expressions whereby one has explained the accompaniment. So in this case, then definitely you don't really have to tell me again. Because we all know a free for all is a type of fight. So say the little argument ended in a free for all. Option B. I don't know a this dash. Whereabouts? Whereabout? Where and about? Where to about? This is uh, a kind of there's all called pluralia tantum. That is how should it be said? Pluralia tantums are words that appear like plurals but that are actually singulars. That is, they naturally take S. If you really want to say them, you must put the, uh, the S. So whereabouts? I don't know at this whereabouts. Not I don't know is whereabout. You have to put the S. It also includes words like headquarters, suburbs, trousers, okay, suites, statistics, mathematics, physics. These are words that naturally they take S. So if you want to say them, you must actually put the S. Auskes. Oh, I live in the Auskes. Not Ausket. Okay, suburbs. The, our headquarters is located in Lagos. Not headquarter. You must put the S. So also we have some words that are singularia tantums. They don't take S, but they are plurals. Like chalk, information. Okay, data. So most of these kind of words, even if they are plurals, they do not take S. But in this case, these ones take S, but they are actually singulars. So I don't know his whereabouts. Not I don't know his whereabouts. The lady lacks the dash in attending to customers. That is right choice of voice. What could she have lacked? That is finesse. Okay? The lady lacks the finesse in attending to customers. A kind of special skill in attending to people or having to do deal, deal with people. So not dexterity, stamina, or austerity, finesse. So he needs some finesse in attending to. Allow him dash the food. This is just like beer infinitive as well that we treated uh, under here or a uh, kind of, I saw him go down the street. Allow him swallow. The, verb, the next verb should be swallow. Allow him swallow the food. Not allow him to swallow. Because we have a beer infinitive, not a two infinitive. Allow him swallow the food. So we have words like allow. Let. Let me do it. You'll be wrong to say let me to do it. Or enable me to. So when you use such kind of verb, then definitely you should have a plural present verb. All the shops were dashed, pending renovations. Closed down, closed up, closed off, closed in. So which one should be chosen? That is closed up. The difference between closed down and closed up is the fact that you use closed down when the closure is going to be permanent. But since it is pending renovation, that is a sort of temporary closure. So all the shops were closed up pending renovation. But it being all the shops maybe were closed down as a result of non-compliance with the state rules. So definitely you will know that that is a kind of a perpetual or absolute closure. But in as much as it is pending renovation, that it is closed up. All the shops were closed up pending renovation. Okay, number 40. It came with a view to dash us. Inform. Informed, 
informs, informing. We have some two infinitives here. So in as much as you got with a view to, so after the to, the next verb should be a continuous verb, which is called gerund, a nominal kind of verb in, the, in its ing form. He came with a view to informing us, with a view to informing us. That is, the governor was here with a view to developing the state, not with a view to develop. So we also have some other verbs like committed to, accustomed to, look forward to. I look forward to meeting you tomorrow. We are committed to revamping all dwindled sector. So all this put together, ordinarily having the two infinitas, then definitely the next kind of verb should be a gerundia, that is a, a kind of nominal verb which is in its ing form.